Hey guys, it's Sam and these are my most disappointing reads of 2019. So this was a topic that was voted on by my Patreon supporters, so every month my Patreon supporters get to vote in a poll for a topic I will do that month in a video. So if you are interested in contributing to my content in that way, then check out my Patreon. It is linked on the screen. So for my Patreon topics, it was between like my goal wrap up and new goals, my favorite books of 2019, and then most disappointing. And I shouldn't have been shocked that disappointing one because you guys love the shade. So these aren't all necessarily books that I hated. Actually, I didn't hate a lot of these. This really is most disappointing. So it's not like worst books, worst written books, least favorite, nothing like that. Although there are some one stars on here, but most of these books range from one to three stars. And again, it's not necessarily that I hated the book. It's just that it was disappointing because I was expecting more out of it. Also, if these are some of your favorite books, I don't care. And you shouldn't care either because just because I was disappointed in it doesn't mean that like you're a bad person, you know? Like don't associate your feelings about a thing as being equivalent to you as a person. I am not personally insulting you or your book taste. You can do whatever you want, baby. And these aren't in any particular order from like worst or most disappointing to least whatever. These are just in the order that I read them in 2019. So the first most disappointing is Give the Dark My Love by Beth Revis. This was a book that I think I gave one star, possibly two. This is the first book in a YA fantasy duology that's supposed to be about necromancy. It's supposed to be about this girl becoming a necromancer and technically she does. Like obviously you know she's going to because it says it in the synopsis but it doesn't happen until the last like 10% of the book and even then like it's not really a lot of a fantasy book. A lot of it is more like historical fiction feeling because there's this plague and she's trying to like stop this plague and blah blah blah. What she ends up doing is becoming a necromancer. Nothing really happens in there. It's just a lot of her being concerned about this plague and that's it. And it was so boring. And this was before I was really getting into like my DNFing stride. So I probably should have DNFed it but I was like it's coming, the necromancy's coming, and then it, it, it didn't. Ooh, there's a couple books early on in the year that were disappointing that people are gonna be like upset about, but it's fine. And one of those is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I have felt more positively about this book as time has passed, but when I originally read this, it was before it came out, I had an arc, there was still a shit ton of hype. I've been following Emily Duncan online for years, so I think that definitely change some of my feelings about this. I found this a little bit more predictable than I was wanting and I didn't particularly like the ways that some of the like romance stuff happened. I went into this knowing it was a enemies to lovers villain romance. Totally fine with that but the ways in which it happened felt like not what I wanted. I wanted much more of a slow burn, much more of a bantery thing and I felt like the characters had a lot more like insta love connection stuff happening that I just wanted more slow burn you know like I knew I was getting into an enemies to lovers that's fine I just wanted more slow burn than I felt like we got with this so am I going to continue with the series yes at some point when I can handle spooky things again but this wasn't a five star book this was a three star book for me I expected it to be five I still like it again more distance from it has made me feel better about it Another disappointing read that was like popular but I don't think this is very like I think a lot of people felt this way and that is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. I love Nikolai and I was so looking forward to a Nikolai book but this wasn't really a Nikolai book if we're honest. This follows three different perspectives. Nikolai from the Grisha trilogy, Zoya from the Grisha trilogy, and Nina from the Six of Crows duology and this book really focused the most I'd say on Zoya. I'd say like Zoya's character arc was the, the most focus and wasn't really about Nikolai even though it's like the Nikolai duology it's King of Scars like what and I just felt like I was bored by Nina's storyline. I liked Zoya's but it felt very rushed and then we didn't get enough Nikolai and that was upsetting. So a lot of this book felt rushed a lot of this book felt like it could have happened over a couple of books actually and the buildup would have been more satisfying and then I didn't love the ending which some people might be like what? There's a lot of things that I didn't want that happened here and I was disappointed. So again this is what I thought was going to be five stars and was a three star. Then we have The Traitor Brew Comorant by Seth Dickinson. This is the first book in an adult fantasy trilogy and this is another one that I was expecting to really like and I just found myself bored throughout the story. I don't remember much of the plot of this to be honest. It's very 
politically driven political machinations. Our main character is definitely a Slytherin, very ambitious, very cunning, that kind of stuff. But I just didn't care. I wasn't connected to the story and I didn't care to continue. So this is one that I think I gave two or three stars, but was not a series that I wanted to continue with. And again, was one that I thought was gonna be five stars. Then we have Slayer by Kirsten White. This is the first book in an adult YA fantasy that's a spinoff of Buffy, the TV show. And this takes place after some events in the Buffy comics, which I have not read, but this follows a main character who is part of like the Watchers and grew up with the Watchers and is very anti-Buffy, which is interesting because even though a lot of people that are Buffy fans don't love Buffy, which is like wrong. And I don't understand how that happens, but I get it. Some people like don't like main characters that the show is completely about, whatever. But you think that generally speaking, people do have more positive feelings for Buffy if they're reading this book and this character hated Buffy. <laughs> and hated Buffy for reasons that you as a show fan no aren't completely valid and so it's just like why would you like it's it's like this book didn't know its audience and I just didn't care I found it like overly hokey like yes is the Buffy universe hokey it is but I found reading about it to be even more hokey than like watching it on tv and I just didn't like the characters they felt pretty immature and I, I just didn't care I just, I don't care to where the story is going. I gave this book one star, will not be continuing this series. Then we have Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This is the second book in the Villain series, which is a series that didn't need to be a series. The first book was Vicious, which is well loved. I loved it. I believe I gave that book five stars. It was one of my favorite books of last year for sure. And I, I knew going into this, that I probably was gonna be disappointed in it. I wasn't like looking forward to it. Vicious could have just stayed a standalone. It's how I view it. It's how I continue to view it, but I'll give it a shot. Oh no. I don't like what Victoria Schwab tends to do with her female characters. I don't like the way she writes her female characters. They're all pretty much the same. They all seem to be a stand-in for one another. They're always like, you know, not like other girls and will monologue about it in the book and actually say things like, I'm not like other girls. It's just, it's awful. And I just don't tend to care about what Victor and Eli are doing anymore and like this battle that they're in together. It was great for one book, but I don't really care about the rest of it. So will I continue to read the villain series? If the third book shows up at my door, I might. But I believe I gave this one or two stars. I believe I gave it two stars because I still do care about some of the other side characters in the villain series and stuff. But generally speaking, this does not, it did not need to be a book and I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, these next two are finales that were so upsetting to me. The first one being Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is the third book in the Illuminae files. I loved Illuminae. It was one of my favorite books of 2017 would have been when it came out and I really enjoyed it. And I didn't really like Gemina, but I thought that maybe Obsidio would make up for it. Absolutely not. So what they did in the first book was so creative and fun and new and fresh. And then they just kept doing the same thing for all the other books. Like all these books follow similar beats, similar plot points happen. And it's like, it's not a twist anymore if I know you're gonna do this. Like so many similar plot points happened between all the stories. It's just like, this is so predictable. This is not fun. I'm not engaged with these characters. Each book follows kind of a different couple and they all have like a similar like way of, like all the teens have a similar way of talking, which is irritating because it's like early 2010s texting speak. And it's like people in the future wouldn't talk the way we do, like try to do this better. And like they're all like, overly snarky teens in a way that's over the top and it just was not good. The first book, like I said, was great and I loved it. And the rest of the books, I'm just like, I cared less and less about the characters. They all felt the same. There was like no payoff. And like I said, it was just plot recycling, like tons of plot points that were the same. It's so irritating. I believe this one, again, was like a one or two star. It really should be like a one because I barely remember what happened in this except for the fact that it was a lot of the same stuff that happened in the other two books. Then we have another disappointing finale and I feel like I'm one of the only people that feels this way. And that is Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is not one that I hated. It is not one that was like poorly written. I still love this series with all my heart, but this is the last book in the Book of the Ancestor series, the first book being Red Sister. And I just was not connected to this. I listened to all the books on audio, so it wasn't changing my format or anything. And I still enjoyed listening to it, but I just felt like there was some jumps in time where things happened that I would have liked to have seen and they happened off page. So I really cared less. And we didn't get to see some of the characters development over time and that made me like lose 
my like connection to them because over the rest of the series we've gotten to see them like the entire time and there's all these really big awesome things happening like some really badass scenes happening here that I just wasn't connected to like I felt so distant from this story when Red Sister and Grey Sister were both I believe five stars for me both favorites of the year that I read them and this I just was like very let down by I forgot a lot of what happened like right after I read it I talked about this a lot in my review of the book and how like I was disappointed that I was disappointed that I don't know what happened and I was feeling very sad because everyone else that I knew that read it like loved it and I didn't know what happened to me and it was just like very upsetting but I do plan on continuing in his series because he's going to be t doing more series within this world and I still love Red Sister and Grey Sister just this one fell flat for me for some reason. Then we have Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen. This is the first book in a YA fantasy series about trolls, but they're honestly more like Faye. And I have heard about this book for years. This one I believe came out in like 2014, 2015. I don't, I don't even know what year this came out, but this has been a book that has been like, this series has been really talked about for people that like a lot of like the Faye series and things like that. People like the romance. I found this to be just disappointing. It was a three star mediocre read for me. I just felt like the main character did a lot of dumb stuff, like really dumb stuff that it's like, I love characters who are like headstrong and do sometimes stupid things. But this was a character that was like, you're not even thinking about this at all. Like I can't see how you came to this conclusion. And I didn't really care about the romance either. Although there is another character that I'm like, are they gonna have a romance? Like I'm kind of in for like a really trashy YA love triangle since this was like circa 2014 probably 2013 so like I'm kind of okay with that if that happens it's a series that I do plan to continue possibly but possibly get it from like the library or something but this I expected to be like a favorite or just like a fluffy like cotton candy favorite and it just was like mediocre and I've forgotten a lot of things about it three star read. Then we have Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. This is the first book in a YA fantasy duology that takes place within the Remnant Chronicles world, which is one of my favorite YA fantasy series of all time. I hated this. I believe I gave it one star. Maybe I gave it two to be like generous, but I just didn't like a lot about this. It didn't really expand on the world as much as I had liked to. I didn't buy the relationship between the two main characters. Like it was supposed to be an enemies to lovers thing, but they became too close too quickly. And I just didn't buy it. I loved the romances in The Remnant Chronicles, but this, I was just like, I can't get behind this. It doesn't make sense that you guys are trusting one another, like at all at the stage that you are. It just moved really quickly. And it was more focused on their romance than anything like political happening. And I liked a lot of the political machinations in The Remnant Chronicles. And I felt like the romance in there like wove in really nicely and really like, added to the complexity of the story where this was like all the political things that are happening are to push the romance along and I hate when that happens like unless you label it as like a fantasy romance and like the romance is going to be the main part but I thought it was going to be like the Remnant Chronicles where I felt the romance was not the main part of that story it was a major subplot but it wasn't like the whole thing about the story and this felt like it was so I don't plan to continue with the second book in the series the fact that it's a duology makes me kind of be like maybe I will but I, d I didn't like it I don't like the characters like I don't care there's a lot of tropes about them that I don't like and like I should like because there's some tropes that are in here that are my kind of tropes enemies to lovers all that stuff but it just wasn't executed the way that I wanted it to be and I am sad about it then we have The River of No Return by B. Ridgway. This is an adult historical fantasy, the first book, and I believe a duology, which I didn't even know it was a duology when I first picked it up. Listen to this on audio. It's a book that I've had on my shelf since 2014. Ended up just feeling like it was mediocre three stars. This is a book about like time travel and there's like, again, some political things happening, but I just wasn't really connected to the characters. I don't really like reading historical fiction, historical fantasy, really, especially if there's less magic like this was. It was really just this like time travel magic and more like, political historical stuff happening and I just don't care and in this case I needed to care more about the characters than I did and I just didn't. We have Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a new adult contemporary romance but really it's more of like a slice of life less romancy than I was expecting so maybe I should just say it's a contemporary. Maybe I'm mislabeling it. But this follows our main character who is an NYU dropout and he's working at a bodega and one day a like superstar almost like Britney Spears in her prime type character comes into his bodega. They meet. He doesn't really realize who she is and then they had this like sort of 
romance thing going on but the romance is not a major part of the story i went into this expecting a romance and what i got was a slice of life contemporary about a character who was pretty depressed and anxious and it was just not something that i wanted to read at the time that i was reading it and i don't think i would have liked it kind of regardless but i felt like it was misrepresented when it was coming out and we were hearing about it and it was talked about like this contemporary romance and it really isn't about the romance. I also felt like the story made the love interest sort of like a manic pixie dream girl. Like I found her way more interesting and I think it would have benefited from being a dual perspective and instead we just have him because of his mental illness sort of being a bad person and a bad friend and then having like consequences but I just don't care about the consequences. I'm someone who I also have mental illness but I don't use it as like an excuse to be a bad person and he was sort of doing that at times and it was just hard to read and not something I really wanted to read about and I was expecting more from it and more from her as a character with her own agency not just as this like manic pixie dream girl that he is using to like make his life more interesting. So I think this one was a two or three stars. Again not like a horrible book but just not something that I wanted. Then we have Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Marillier. This is a very classic fantasy story that a lot of people like. It is a fairy tale retelling and it is more of a historical fantasy, Celtic folklore mythology are mixed into this and it's very beautifully written. I had an okay time reading it. I listened to it on audio but I expected this to be a five star like wonderful classic for me and I just didn't find myself caring that much about it. I didn't really connect much to the characters. They felt very distant for me. Sorsha, our main character, doesn't have a lot of agency. She really can't speak through most of the story for certain circumstances that are happening. And when she is able to speak, her agency is really taken away. Everyone else, mostly men, make decisions for her, which is accurate for the time. But at the same time, is not really something that I care to read. So it just wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a new favorite, and it was just a three-star read for me. And lastly, we have Armistice by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is the second book in the Amberlo dossier. I listened to the first book earlier in December, and then listened to this one late December, and I loved Amberlo, mostly for the characters. And there was a couple things with the characters and changing of characters that I didn't like within this book. This book was a lot more about the political thing which are important but I really liked in Amberlo how the political things changed some of the characters and their behaviors and things and how they reacted to things and that was really interesting and this was lacking that because I didn't care about the characters as much in this story. So I'm going to continue with this series but Amberlo was more of like a solid 4, 4.5 stars and this was more of like a 2.5 to 3 because it just felt like more of a filler book for me but I do hope that the last book in the series pulls through for me. Who knows that might be in my most disappointing books of 2020. <laughs> So that is it for my most disappointing reads of 2019. Comment them below and let me know some of yours. And again, remember that some of your most disappointing reads could have been my favorites and vice versa. And it's fine. Let's start off 2020 with not being ridiculous, shall we? So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.